What's up, Skywatchers? What is up indeed? Wednesday, September 3rd, 2025. Purple auroras and the frequency war in our sky. On the nights of September 1st and 2nd, 2025, people around the world reported dazzling purple auroras from Scotland to New Zealand, across Canada, the UK, and even mid-latitude skies over the Great Lakes. The problem? The storm that produced them was officially rated at only a moderate G2 geomagnetic storm. By conventional science, a G2 is far too weak to generate widespread purple emissions. So what really happened? We have a mismatch of a weak storm and strong colors. Auroras are produced when charged solar particles collide with gases in Earth's upper atmosphere. Green comes from oxygen at 100 kilometers. Red comes from oxygen at 200 to 300 kilometers. Purple comes from molecular nitrogen 90 to 120 kilometers, but only when that nitrogen is artificially energized. Normally, purple requires a severe geomagnetic storm to occur on a wide scale. Yet, in this case, a G2 storm lit up the skies worldwide. When we line up the aurora window with Earth and solar observations, the pattern doesn't look natural. Magnetometers in Sweden recorded jagged spikes and sharp drops inconsistent with smooth solar wind coupling, pointing to a localized high-frequency heating injection. And we have irradiant spikes. Sudden bursts rose far above baseline, indicating short, unnatural bursts of energy. And then we have satellite data gaps from GOES X-ray flux on August 30th. Instruments dropped out around the same period, officially called temporary data losses. Convenient timing right before the global auroras. These aren't signatures of a modest G2 storm. They're signatures of directed frequency actively layered on top of natural solar input. Here's the smoking gun. HARP was operating. Official schedule confirms HARP was transmitting on July 23rd, 24th, 2025, and again during a major campaign, August 12th through the 15th, running nightly transmissions between 2.8 and 10 megahertz. This matters because those frequencies couple directly into the F2 layer where nitrogen is most active. Directed beams can seed ionospheric regions days or weeks before a geomagnetic storm. Scientific literature has repeatedly documented artificial auroras from high-frequency heating campaigns. In other words, we know the facilities can create purple emissions. We know they were active. We know the storm was too weak, yet purple emissions spread worldwide anyway. HARP is only one node in a much larger system. Modern ionospheric operations often involve multiple facilities working together. Transmitters, radars, receivers, all spread out across different continents. In 2021, HARP ran joint experiments with the Kodiak Superdarn radar and nearby receivers. By adjusting frequency and power, they deliberately created field-aligned irregularities in the ionosphere. Superdarn tracked the disturbances while local receivers captured simulated electromagnetic emissions, confirming the plasma was being engineered. Once the ionosphere is primed, even modest frequency injections can produce dramatic changes. As HARP was running its summer campaigns in Alaska, Europe was preparing to bring a new system online, ISCAT 3D, a massive phased array radar spanning Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Multi-site operations, a tri-static setup linking sites in Norway, Sweden, and Finland, able to coordinate transmissions and measurements across the polar ionosphere. The timing is no accident. While HARP was heating the ionosphere in July and August, ISCAT 3D was being phased in, extending the global network's reach. Together, these facilities form a coordinated grid, each reinforcing the other's effects. When nitrogen is ionized beyond natural levels, the effects reach far beyond the colors in the sky. Electrical conductivity alters lightning behavior and storm potential. The global electric circuit. Injected currents ripple across Earth's atmospheric capacitor, destabilizing weather systems. 
and there's biological impacts. Frequencies in the same range affect living systems tuned to the Schumann resonance. Purple auroras are more than pretty lights. They are visible fingerprints of an engineered plasma field. A weak G2 storm cannot explain global purple auroras. The data trail shows magnetospheric spikes, irradiance bursts, satellite dropouts, and confirmed tarp transmissions. At the same time, Europe's new ISCAT 3D system was entering service, adding to the network of facilities capable of ionospheric manipulation. This wasn't a mystery, it was a coordinated frequency operation using the ionosphere itself as the canvas. The colors we saw were not just a hand of the sun, they were the unmistakable fingerprints of technology at work in the sky. Most people think it stops at the sun. A flare of fires, the magnetosphere takes the hit, and that's that. But what we're really seeing is a feedback loop. Every time Harp, Icecat, or Superdarn run their heaters, they pump artificial energy into the ionosphere and it couples straight back to the magnetosphere. And because the magnetosphere is tied into the sun's own magnetic field, the feedback doesn't stop here. It resonates back to the sun itself. That's why we keep seeing major solar flares and sunspot bursts right alongside of heater activity. Earth isn't just a passenger in space weather anymore, it's become the driver. Now you know I usually focus on geoengineering and how it's used to steer weather systems. I've also shown you in the past how artificial auroras are created and how technogenic interference has become the hidden driver behind much of what we're watching unfold. They want us to believe it's only the sun or the galactic current sheet, forces beyond our control. But I've seen the dark forces in white lab coats inject the atmosphere with energy, disturbing natural currents, multiplying the outcomes, and then calling it science, while telling us it's all natural. What we're witnessing is not just nature, it's nature being pushed, prodded, and weaponized. I want to thank all of you who support this channel, and a big thank you to all of you who send me information. Alright Skywatchers, stay aware. Be prepared, and until next time, keep looking up.